Hey there, friends. How's it going today? So David Potts with Song Notes here, and a lesson today, a quick one where I want to do a little song breakdown of the John Hyatt song, Have a Little Faith in Me. Now i got to say, this is not a song uh, or an artist I've, I've really been familiar with at all, um, but Don, you most recently wrote in saying you're going to see John Hyatt next week, and uh, you love this song. The chords you find online from Ultimate Guitar or whatever are in the key of F, and they're impossible to play. Uh, and you're looking for some help. So I'm going to help you out. And this is also going out to Stephen, Irene, Billy, and Edward. All of you have emailed me in the past year or so asking for John Hyatt lessons. So um, it's one of the things I love about the Song Notes community is uh, the members on my Song Notes website turn me on to new music all the time. And uh, in return, I get to sort of make lessons to help you all out. So I'll, I'll help you out, Don, and anyone else looking to get going with this one. So we're going to be doing a capo 5 version. Now that's what uh, John Hyatt is playing. If you he, he recorded this one on a piano, right? But when he does it live, sometimes he plays it on a guitar. And you can see him doing um, capo 5. He's using key of C chord family, okay? The part of this song I want to start with is the intro and the verse. This is probably the bulk of the first half of this song, right? And there's a couple things going on here. Let's look at what John Hyatt's playing, okay? So Don, this is the video you sent me, actually. Let's watch what he's playing. It's just three different chords he's using. See if you can spot them and identify them, and I'll tell you what they are in a quick second here. All right, check this out. When the road gets dark All right, so as you saw there, he's going from a C to an A minor. Uh, he also has an F. He's just doing the middle four strings and then back to a C. So the progression there is C, A minor, to F, to C. Okay, this F is the middle four strings only, right? And notice how for these three chords, my index finger is staying still on this first fret of the second string, right? It's one less finger to worry about moving, nice and straightforward, right? Now, the thing is, there's something going on with the rhythm, and this is really important, okay? It's not just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is not what he's playing as far as rhythmically. Now these are the right chords he's playing, but rhythmically he's doing something different, okay? I'm gonna put on what he's playing one more time, see if you can ch tell when he's changing chords. I'll give you a hint. He's gonna change on the one count, but there's another thing going on here. Let's listen to him one more time. This is a different clip of him playing it live. Something a little hopeful. Yeah. When a road gets dark, baby, you can no longer see that my love for a spark. Have a little faith in me. So what's going on specifically is he is doing a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, okay? He's doing changes on the one count and then he's doing it on the off beat. He's doing a, a change just after the two count but just before the three count. Um, you'll hear this referred to as a pushed chord change, right? I always think of someone getting pushed in the pool before they're ready because that's kind of what it does to your ear. You're listening to it. Our bodies kind of expect things to happen on the beat, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice and square, right? But when we do that second, every other chord is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. This is an essential part of what gives this song its character, okay? Now tons of other songs do this as well. This is not the only song to do this. Fast Car does this, right? Uh, I've got a fast car, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Another song that does it is Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, right? 
1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Okay, so you might hear this referred to as syncopation or the change on the offbeat or a push chord change, but effectively that's an, an, an essential part of what makes this song what it is, okay? So 1 and 2 and 3. And there's another thing he's doing here is using all down strums, okay? So it's essential that you uh, are able to strum with emphasis on that one and two and three and four and keep all the other letter, all the other strums light and brushy if you can just maybe on the thickest couple strings right really give it that sort of feel so that's the first thing that's going on there with the intro and the verse. Now, I wanna talk quickly about the chords, the voicings that he's using, right? Now, I showed you these sort of simple ones, right? Focusing mainly on the middle four strings of each chord, okay? But there's some things we can do. What he's doing is just before each chord change, he's usually removing a finger. So check out this, and you can sort of see what I'm talking about here. Have a little faith in me. Why not tears you cry? All you can believe. So effectively, it's for one eighth note just before each chord change, he's removing a finger. So here's a tab showing that. Check this out. Okay, this is just one of any possible ways you could do it. Um, you could remove the finger or add the finger earlier or later. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, you could actually even just take every finger off except for that index finger on the first fret of the second string, right? It works. So that's something you're gonna see him do on guitar. So Don, when you see him live next week, watch his hands on the guitar and see if he's doing that. And as long as you land on that one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, on that emphasized strum where the chord change officially happens, as long as you land on the new chord there, you're good. For the strum or two before that emphasized beat, you can sort of be free and loose. Uh, with, with how you do things there. So that's effectively how you're gonna play the intro and the verse. Now, for the chorus of this song, it's gonna add one chord. It'll add a G chord and an E minor, which are pretty straightforward, but there's something going on with the rhythm here that's different. Have a little faith in me. Have a little faith in me. Have a little faith. And yes, indeed, what he's doing here is he's abandoning that sort of syncopated rhythm where that second chord change and the fourth chord change happens on the offbeat. Instead, in the chorus, all the chord changes happen on the quarter notes. I think of just someone pulling up a chair, sitting at the table and saying, you know, let's talk about this. Let's get down to business. Really put a little faith in me. It's kind of like getting rid of the rhythmic cleverness. And it's like, hey, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now from a chord point of view, it's a C, G, A minor, E minor, two F, two G, to C and F and G and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, much more of a straightforward chord progression and, and a straightforward rhythm. And I mean, this evokes so many songs. Paco Bell's Canon in D, right? Very similar to that. It also reminds me of Oasis, Don't Look Back in Anger, right? So Sally can wait. She knows it's too late as I'm walking on by. Even the first uh, three chords of the Beatles, you know, let it be. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary, comfort me. Now that E minor is different. But again, when you lead with that C, G, and A minor like that, right, the one to the five to the six, it just evokes so many classic progressions. So again, and he's using this in this song, I think, to just draw some distinction from the verse. The intro and the verse are doing the one and two and three and four and one and 
two and three and four and one and two and three right then he goes to the chorus and kind of just on the quarter notes right one two three four one two and three and four okay that's something else to listen for uh, and it makes the song what it is, right? But then he goes back to the verse and does that a few more times. And there's one last part he does in this song to sort of give it, uh, to, to make it what it is, right? There's a key change. So basically, he's going to go to the chorus the second time. And at the end of that chorus, instead of ending with a C, F, G, and then repeating it, he's going to start that, do that last measure of C. Then he's going to go to a D, which is a new chord at this point, right? Now, D... Uh, effectively is functioning as what's called a secondary dominant, right? Meaning it's, a, it's functioning as a dominant chord. The dominant chord is the five chord, right? In the key of C, the dominant is our G chord. G is gonna set us back up to go back to the C. The five chord loves to go back to the one. Our ears kind of like the sound of it. Now, when we go to an unexpected chord like that, nine times out of 10, what's gonna happen is we say, hey, in what key is D the five chord? And the answer is G. And that's exactly what John Hyatt does, right? So here's him playing the last couple measures of the chorus normally in the key of C. And watch how he goes to the D, and it kind of grabs your ear's attention. And then he goes to the G, and he'll start this sort of ending version of the chorus, which is the same relative progression. It's just all transposed to the key of G. So check this out. Have a little faith. And then we're in the key of G. So the chorus here. Now, the official way he plays it on the album is a G. D, E minor, B minor, to C, to D, to G, to C, D, G, D, okay? All changes on the three count and the one count. But I'll say this, to simplify things, for that B minor, you can just stay on the E minor if you want. That's actually what he does. If you watch him here, he just kind of stays on that E minor, and it sounds just fine. Okay, so that's effectively all you need for the song. These are all the sections. I'll put a playthrough video of me going through all these on my website, zoomed in, no talking. If you wanna just work on that and practice it and I'll loop it over, that way you can do it a few different times. It'll give you something to play along with. But the, the final advice I would have for anyone learning a song like this or just learning how to listen to music, whenever you hear that rhythmic pulse of right, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Even if you're, you don't have your guitar in your hand, but you're seeing someone play this, you can kind of, you know, tap your shirt or something, all kind of, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Music for me is always a physical thing. When I'm seeing live music, I can't help but move my body, try to, I mean, if I know the words, I like trying to sing along in a rhythm, but also feeling those pulses, it can make it uh, music really uh, satisfying to listen to and just helps you appreciate it, you know? So thanks for watching, everyone. Don, I hope you found this helpful. Head on over to my website, y'all, to see the playthrough, and I'll link out to some of the stuff I, I showed earlier, all the live versions, a couple lyric sheets, the key of F versions, if you're kind of wanting to play it in piano or something like that, and uh, some of the other lessons that'll help out with this uh, from my catalog. So thanks, all. Um, if there's any more John Hyatt songs you'd like to see me get to sometime in the future, always let me know. I'm always happy to hear, but uh, it's my pleasure to help this help out uh, the folks who are looking to learn stuff don uh, in your case here so enjoy the concert and um, i'll see you all in the next one take care and bye-bye my friends